Hello everybody, Patrick here from Bot Squad, and today's five minute video is about how to track your work and your computer activity automatically and for free with an app called Time Camp. So I'm trying to keep this really short and sweet, so I'm not gonna walk you through every single step, but um, hopefully you can follow me. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is sign up for a free Time Camp account. The free plan's awesome, um, it'll do 95% of everything that anybody could want it to do. Um, once you've signed up for an account, you want to make sure you download, install, and switch on the TimeCamp desktop app on all of the computers that you use to work, and make sure that you switch the desktop app to automatic tracking mode. Did I actually start that timer? I didn't. Okay. Um, so make sure you install the desktop app on every computer you use, log in, switch it on, log in, set it to automatic mode, and also set it up as a default login item so that if your computer ever shuts down or gets shut down, when you start up again, it will open the app automatically and ask you to log in, that way you don't forget. So here we are in Time Camp, and I think I will, we'll just use today to show you how it works. So this is the timesheet view, which is represented by the little clock symbol. That's where you're going to spend 99% of your time. There are two ways to manually enter a time entry in Time Camp. So first of all, uh, whichever method you, of the two you're using, you need to select a project or a task. Um, I have some pre-existing projects and tasks, so I've selected this one as an example. If I wanted to run a start-stop timer for house projects, I would simply click this blue button, and I would then click the green start timer button. What is gonna happen is if we are in a previous day, like if we were on the 23rd of May and I used the start stop timer, when I click that green start button, it's gonna automatically move us to the current day and, and the entry is gonna be there because obviously when you click the start stop timer, you're recording in the present. So it automatically creates that time entry in today's date, even if you were looking at an earlier date. So we'll stop that timer. The other way to add time, again, we'll select a project or a task. We'll just select personal and we'll add it manually. And we just choose a start time and a finish time. But we will need to enter the hours manually ourselves. It doesn't calculate it for you. So we're just gonna type in 2H for two hours and we're gonna add that time entry, boom. And we've got it down here, two hours. So those are the two manual ways to record time in Time Camp. Now for the cool stuff. So we've installed our desktop app and let's just say we've had that desktop app installed for a little while, it's been running and it's been recording our computer activity automatically. Now, what will happen in the project section, actually let's go there now, which is represented by the two little folders on the left hand sidebar, we'll click on that. Um, we've got our projects and tasks, or if we don't have any yet, that's where we create them. And when you create a project or a task, you have an option, actually let's just create a new one, just call it Eat Food will be the task, and we'll create it in the Bot Squad project. And you see here it says enable keywords, so I'm going to click that enable and I'm going to just type in food and hit add task and you'll see over here now in bot, the bot squad project we've got a task called eat food and if we click on it it's got a keyword called food and what that's going to do is as long as the time camp desktop app is running anytime it logs computer activity that features the word food it is going to automatically assign the time entry or entries to the task called eat food in the bot squad project so if you take the time and effort to set up your projects and tasks accurately and well, Time Camp is going to do 99% of your time tracking for you and you won't need to click a button or lift a finger most of the time. However, there will still be times like this day today where you have some unassigned computer activities. We see this little item, it's clickable, um, it'll always be down the bottom. Uh, and this icon shows us there are two computer activities that are automatically recorded and unassigned and we can see that there's a grand total of two minutes uh, so honestly I wouldn't even bother assigning those but let's have a look at the previous day and see what we've got unassigned computer activity eight hours and 18 minutes now that's worth allocating so let's just click on it to see the items contained within 
and I know what you're thinking at this point. It is overwhelming. There are so many entries. Let's click the timer. Um, 47 seconds left. But first of all, it is overwhelming. There's a lot of entries there. You look at this, and if you've got any experience with time tracking, you think, oh my God, I need to spend all day allocating these activities to tasks and projects. But no, you're not. Um, I'll just close that for a second. First of all, if you set up your projects and tasks and keywords correctly, 99% of your logged computer activity will be allocated automatically for you and won't even show up here in assigned computer activities. Secondly, you will see with any of these entries, if we look down, you'll see the bulk of them are zero minutes. So we're not even going to worry about them. Let's just filter so that we only deal with tasks or activities that are over three minutes. So now we've only got, I don't know how many that is, 12, whatever. Um, turn the timer off we're going a little bit over time now if we want to allocate these to a project or task all we have to do is make sure the project or task exists in our day view and it can exist with zero minutes it doesn't have to have a time value so let's say this task here um, actually no this one here missive I know that that's my email client so I know that's emailing so what I'm going to do I'm going to just in the tasks and entries I'm going to type an email to filter I'm going to click that task there, email, which is on the project both businesses. I'm going to add the time entry with zero minutes. So it's showing up here now with zero minutes. I go back, I click missive. Oh, it sometimes does this, I don't know why. Might be just my, it might be an extension conflict with my browser. Huh. It's been very difficult. There we go. Okay, now it's letting me do it. Will it let me select all of them? It will. Okay. Uh, I think it's just a extension conflict with Chrome. So now, once I've selected all the missive items, I'm going to click the Move Activities button beside them, and then I'm going to click the Move Here button beside Email, and we will now see that we've now got 16 minutes entered in the email category. Now, because you've got the ability to set up keywords that are going to automatically assign your logged computer activity for you but because you can bulk select and assign time entries really easily and because a lot of your time entries will actually be zero or one minute or two minutes and not even worth worrying about you are going to find that if you set up time cam correctly it's an absolute breeze to record your work and your time hours accurately without even potentially lifting a finger so that's it time camp is awesome it's free plan is killer it's going to do 99 percent of the work for you when it comes to time tracking and that data trust me is solid gold in terms of improving your business and improving yourself becoming more productive and effective that's it video over i think i'm i don't know how far over time i am i think i'm a minute over time hopefully you found this helpful and it made some kind of sense I made it as short as I could. Any questions, reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help. If I can help, I will. Right, that's it. Over and out, people.